Hey, this is Michelle Kapaska, and welcome to my Fearless Innovator podcast. Thank you for joining me today. My hope is to inspire, educate, and entertain you. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fearless Innovator podcast. My name is Michelle Kapaska, and I'm your host. This week's topic is just move it. If you recall from last week's episode, I had purchased 1.65 acres that had a double wide mobile home and a two story stick built house with a six car garage. My goal with this property was to build a custom home and flip it and move on to another property. I was clearly living up to the nomad life, a name given to me by my parents. I love to move around, but that's not what happened. I worked with a local commercial lender and was able to sell him on my idea to build this custom home. The construction loan had a limited time frame, and at the end, I would need to seek conventional lending. After the purchase, I sold the double wide and had it hauled off, and in its place, my home was built, which took almost two years, by the way, but that's another story for another day. Then something else unexpectedly happened, and it ruined, and I mean ruined, my goal for flipping the home. Sadly, I got into a relationship. That relationship changed the trajectory of my vision. Now it made sense to keep the home, but it just didn't make sense to me to have two dwellings on one property. Had I known what I know today, I had a perfect multifamily property, which in today's market is clearly sought after, but at the time I didn't know what I had. Now I was hunting for a solution. Everyone I encountered, I would ask, what would you do? And I got no viable solutions. Mom and dad came to visit for their annual visit in February. It was during this visit with dad where we actually were standing inside the six-car garage when I got a call that said I needed to move from the two-story building into my new home, which was 20 feet away, that day. And I had to take pictures that day and send them that day back to the mortgage company so they could validate that I actually lived on premise so I could pass the final inspection, allowing me to take possession of the new home. Immediately, mom and dad and I went to work and began moving the essentials. After we completed our work, dad and I were back in the garage talking. Only this time, the attitude was a little different. We were now discussing his death and everything he wanted me to know about his life and how he wanted things to go after his death. He told me three things. He did everything in his life he ever wanted to do. He lived life with no regrets and that he was happy. I wasn't extremely happy talking about his death, but I did listen intently. I decided to change the topic to something more enlightening. I said, Dad, now that I've moved into the house, what on earth am I going to do with this two-story building? And he said, Shell, didn't you tell me that 1.65 acres over there with the single wide is for sale? And I said, yeah. He said, go buy the 1.65 acres and move this house over there in place of the single wide. And when you do, rebuild this barn to the size you want. But make sure you put in a very large door in the middle because one day, Michelle, you're going to want an RV. My dad was brilliant. And I was his perfect little go-getter kind of girl. I made a deal with the neighbor next door and I purchased the 1.65 acres. The single wide wasn't worth two pennies, but I found a group of guys that came to get it for free and they made it a hunt camp up north somewhere. I don't know where. I, I really don't care, but it was gone. I started hunting for house movers. Now, in Iowa, this happens a lot where people move houses, but not so much in Florida. My friends thought I was nuts. I didn't care. The least I could do was research it and see what I could find out. I heard during this time about a house they moved on water. So I was confident I could find someone. I planted seeds everywhere trying to find a house mover. Finally, I found a guy in Dade City. He was just 40 minutes from my house. I still have his business card, actually. He shows up on time with his buddy. Two good old country boys chewing tobacco. He asked me what the goal was. We walked and talked as I explained it to him. And he looked over it real good and said, yep, we can do that. And he said, this is how it's going to work. I'm going to place these big jacks under the home, raise it up, cut off the bottom floor, place it on a flatbed semi-truck, 
lower the jack so the home is now on the truck, and very slowly, inch by inch, move the house from point A to point B. This process will take about a week to complete. My job was I had to cut down fence with nasty bushes in it. I had to take a lean-to off the building. I had to pull a permit and I had to hire a contractor to put down the new elevated foundation that ultimately became the crawl space under the house. Once the permitting was approved, work could begin. Within two months, we were ready for the move. Unfortunately, I couldn't witness the move because I had to go to my J-O-B and I wasn't allowed time off to be there. But my great friend Kathy went and took pictures and video and gave me the play-by-play. It went off without a hitch. Next steps was to secure the home to the new foundation, took off the baby blue vinyl and put up concrete walls and paint and then wait for the inspection. A couple of days later, I cleared the inspection and began my search for a renter. The total cost of the project was 40000 at the time. You couldn't have built a home for that price. Over the next several years, I've had tenants come and go, and most still remain in contact, except for the tenants that decided that meth was smart. I didn't have to call the cops because his brother, which I knew he was afraid of, did the trick and they were gone in 15 days. Today, this home is a short-term rental. And yes, I rebuilt the garage to meet my dad's standards. And yes, you already know I have an RV. But I will guarantee you at the time I built the barn, no, I did not have an RV and nor did I think I would ever want one. I sure miss my dad's wisdom. He passed the same year we had a discussion about his death, just months later. And P.S., the relationship didn't work out either. Thank you for listening. I hope you were inspired, entertained, or learned something new. Tonight, I'm hosting what I call the Innovation Roundtable. If you'd like to attend my Innovation Roundtable where we talk about everything real estate, go to fearlessinnovator.com forward slash roundtable to sign up. Have a good day. Thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed the show. If I can help you invest in your future, reach out to me at fearlessinnovator.com. Catch me later.